Okay, this is a story about finding my oldest son, Eric's birth father. So here's how the story begins. Eric was probably in his early 20s and uncertain what he wanted to do in his future and really kind of struggling emotionally about which direction to go. He had been in and out of school and he was just looking for some stability and some direction. So one morning while I was praying, I thought to myself, he already knows his birth mother. I took him to visit her back in Ohio when Eric was about 14 and he got to meet his four um, half brothers. And we had a wonderful time on a farm and Eric swam with his little brothers and they followed him around the farm like ducks after the mama duck. Kim and I enjoyed watching all five of them swim and we just stood there with an arm in arm and just said, isn't this amazing what God is doing? So Eric was in touch with his birth mother, but we never did uh, meet or know his birth father. So we contacted Kim it was, uh, when Eric was in his 20s, we contacted Kim and asked her for his name and address if she had it. So she was able to locate the birth father and his name was Kevin. So I emailed him and um, didn't get a response. So I called him and he says, oh, I don't check my email that often. Um, I explained who I was and told him that he had a son named Eric uh, from Kim. And uh, did he remember her? And yes, he did remember. So I asked him, would he mind doing a DNA test to verify that he was actually the father? And he agreed to do the DNA test. So I ordered two kits, one for Eric and one for him. Eric did his, and then we sent the other one to Kevin. Well, a week went by, two weeks, three weeks, a whole month, and we never received the DNA confirmation. So I uh, tried calling him and I couldn't get through to him. There was no answer. There was no recording machine. So um, now fast forward maybe six months and it was time for my family reunion in Ohio. And he lived in Ashtabula, which is not too far from my cousin's house in Salem, Ohio. So I called my cousin and I said, I'm going to come to the reunion and would you go with me to meet and try to find Eric's birth father so I could get the DNA done again? And she, she agreed. She was excited about it. So come summer reunion time, I fly to Salem, Ohio. And my cousin and I said, oh my gosh, it's almost the 4th of July. Um, why don't we take him, just to kind of break the ice, um, some kind of a 4th of July basket. So we got all excited. We went off to the 99 cent store. We bought saran wrap. We bought ribbons. We bought a big basket. We filled it with um, chocolate and sausage and, and crackers and cheese and things that we thought a man would appreciate. And we had this huge basket. It was like that. So um, off we went in the car to Ashtabula. Well, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon when we got there, three o'clock maybe, and we pull up in front of his house and there's a big chain link, chain link fence at the end of the driveway and a big sign that said, beware of dog. And there was a big chow dog sitting there, you know, like guarding the fence. And my cousin, Karen, also had a chow dog named Wolfie. And all of us were afraid of Wolfie, uh, except Karen and her family. And my father, he would walk right into Wolfie's uh, pen and, and cage and pet him and stuff. And all the rest of us, just he was an aggressive dog. And so when we saw the chow dog, we went, oh boy, okay. So she goes, I'll wait here. So she waited in the car. I got out, went up with the big basket, rang the doorbell. Pretty soon, he opens the door. And I said, hi, Kevin. 
I'm Rebecca, member we talked on the phone. I'm here from California to bring you this basket, hoping that you would do a DNA test. May I come in? And he said, sure, come on in. So I came in, I had the DNA test in my purse and um, I ordered another one. And so uh, his girlfriend was in the kitchen cutting her daughter's hair and he stayed in the living room with me. I told him why I was there, that I really felt like it was important for Eric to know who his birth father was to give him some sort of closure about his past. I had studied in the Bible that a firstborn gets his strength or a male child gets his strength from his father. And so although Eric had a wonderful adoptive father, my, my husband, Michael, he was strong in every way. Um, I just felt there was something missing that Eric needed to make him move forward. So I said, oh my gosh, can I take your picture to show you to Eric? And he said, sure. And he was so sweet, just like my Eric. And he was so accommodating. He walked outside, he was in his socks and a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. And we got out front and um, I said, now, just stand here in the light. I want to take your picture of your face. So he just stood there and I took his face. And then I said, now, can you turn to the side? And he turned to the side and I took his picture. And can you turn to the other side? I took his picture. Now, can you back up? I want to get your whole body. Well, as soon as I took a look at him, I knew he was Eric's birth father. He had the same beautiful wide shoulders and the same kind of legs. And I said, oh my gosh, this is Eric's father. I don't even need the DNA. And he did resemble Eric. Eric resembled him. So he let me take all the pictures and then I pulled out the DNA and I said, may I swap the inside of your mouth? And he said, sure. So he opened his mouth just like a mother trying to brush her son's, her child's teeth or something. And I'm standing there holding his chin and I'm going around in his mouth and I put it back in the tube and screwed it up. And, and he just was just smiling. And I said, wow, you are so kind to let me do this. A total stranger shows up and sticks something in your mouth and takes your pictures. And he says, you know what? He goes, it's really interesting that you should come at this time. And I said, why? He said, well, normally I work until five or six o'clock, but today we were slow and my boss sent me home early. He said, had he not done that, he said, I wouldn't have even been home and I would have missed you. And I said, oh, that's amazing. That's a miracle. And then he goes, and you know what else is really strange? He goes, see that dog over there? He said, that dog will not even let anybody pull into our drive without him just going crazy at the fence. And he said, if you notice, he said, my dog is still laying there. He hasn't even barked. I said, well, now that you mention it, I do notice that. And he goes, well, that must be a God thing, he said. I said, oh, yes, it's a God thing. I said, we prayed before we came. And I said, I prayed with my husband. I prayed with my cousin. I prayed with your son, Eric. And I said, I can't wait to go home and show him your picture. And then I said, Kevin, can I pray with you and for you? And he said, sure. So um, I took his hands and I prayed for him. And after I prayed for him, I said to him, tell me what nationality you are. I think it's important for Eric to know his physical roots. And he said, well, he said, I think I'm part German, Irish, and Welsh. And I thought, oh, well, that would explain the strawberry red hair, right? Eric was born with red hair. That's why he got his name, Eric the Red. I originally named him Samuel, but when I took a look at him and his hair was red, I just went, that doesn't look like a Samuel. So I changed his name on his birth certificate to Eric Levis instead of they had Samuel. So um, the fun part of this story is after I told him, I said, oh, so your mom and dad were, you know, Irish and Welsh, which one was which? And he said, well, he said, I know who my dad is, he said but I never had a mother. She deserted us when I was a baby. I'm like, no wonder he allowed somebody's mother to come and wanna find their son's roots. 
because he knew that he never had a mother. And that was the sweetness and the willingness to connect um, a mother's heart to her son. And I just gave him a hug. He gave me a hug. And I came back to the car and jumped in and, and he, Karen goes, how did it go? How did it go? What did he say? And she goes, I was watching everything. It was amazing. Everything was amazing. I'm like, yes, I know. So we talked all the way home. We were so delighted and excited. So the, the icing on the cake to this story is this. We got home and I um, brought the pictures up on my computer and Eric and my other son, Stephen and Michael all came in and we were all looking at the pictures. And I said, he goes, wow, I do kind of look like my birth father. And I said, yes, Eric. I said, isn't it wonderful? And he was pausing and he was just staring, looking at his shoulders and his legs. And when he was all done, Michael was very quiet. And Eric, my sensitive, wonderful son said, suddenly, he pulled away and he threw his arms around my husband, Michael, and he hugged him and he said, I already have the best father in the world. <laughs> my husband got all teary and said, oh, Eric, I love you. Thank you, honey. And we all just hugged each other. And that was God the whole way from my cousin being willing to come with me for us, the time we got there, for his willingness to let me um, fulfill a mother's heart and then for the dog to be silent. So this is the extra candle on the cake maybe. That uh, next week I was studying because I was um, teaching on the Hebrew Exodus and it said the night they left Egypt the Lord let them out with a, a fire and not a dog barked in the whole city. Wow. And now you know Eric's full story.